Lisa, ready? Yes, thank you. So I'm going to call this meeting to order at six minutes after Fox 6, and thank you for coming. We're going to see which le what legislators, legislators actually come. Um, they just emailed Krista or texted her and what, and we said, use your own judgment, mm -hmm. you know, whatever you feel comfortable with. And we will be out of here by 7.30. Hmm. By 7.30? Yeah. And I'm just going to do that so that we all get home. Great. Without totally being scared. The, um, the tough stuff's supposed to be here at between 8 and 9. It's supposed to get pretty nice. Welcome uh, to our guests. Do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. My name's Amy Matnag. I own Auto Craftsman in Peculiar. And I know your voice from the radio. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you. Are you here for a reason or? I am. I have questions and um, comments. Okay, so let me just finish this and then we'll get there. Agenda revisions. I have a slight one. I put on the discussion agenda to talk about the current year calendar. And I'm going to ask you as a board to take some action on rearranging some days. And I'll talk more about that later. Anybody else? Um, I'm just, if there's some point during the meeting where we can uh, maybe get a, an idea of what our fallback option might be on budget and uh, all of that, if, you know, things. If we get deferred. If we get deferred. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, I've got that. That's a really good question. I've got to figure it out. Figured out. But I, Can we do that in the administrator's report? Sure, we'll do it there. I'll tell you where we are. I've been are tempted to put up another video on some of that questions. Mm -hmm. Okay. On the process that he said. Yep. That, that's what you're looking for. Yeah. The process. Exactly. Perfect. Thanks. Public comments. Now is the time. Now is the time. Okay, I was hoping to have some legislators here. But, um, so hang tight. Okay. They're coming at six thirty, and then you can engage us all in conversation. Would you yeah. rather do it then? I would. Okay, then let's wait. Okay. That's totally Thanks. fine. They're coming at six thirty, so we'll get to that. Thanks. Um, a motion to approve. There are three consent agendas: um, December nineteenth, January fourteenth, and January twenty-first. And two of them are quite short, and one is a regular meeting. So a motion to accept those agendas. We're all three? Sure. Okay, I will move that we approve all three sets of minutes. And I will second. All right. Um, comments on them? Look good to me. There was just one place in the, um, on the first set, the December 19th, on the second page. There's a big space between superintendent and Kimball in the first paragraph. It's a little, a little confusing. Oh, I see what you're saying. Starts a new line mm -hmm. at the end of that paragraph. Oh, yeah. Where is it? Under budget form presentation at the top of the second page. Go down to the, that's like, yeah. it, so it says superintendent of, oh. and then Kimball. Kimball State. Just needs one back to big there. Huh, okay. And then I noticed on 5.5 .5 that the motion, it wasn't written that the motion carried unanimously, which I think it did. It doesn't say anything about voting. 5.6. Else? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. On to the discussion agenda, town meeting preparations. <laughs> I can talk about Scott's question here. Go or, ahead. That would be great. Okay. So I think in, well, a couple of things. Let me go back and set some context. As you all know, because I sent it all to you on January 10th, we were sent what at that point was told to me to be directive. Um, the AG has walked that back since then, but that we were to follow, um, we were not to put budgets together at all for local boards, and that we were under orders to go forward with, um, with the consolidation process. 
since that time, the Attorney General wrote a letter in the court case that uh, some of the districts in Washington Central are part of saying, um, no, that was advice. So I kind of feel a little thrown under the bus, frankly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I've been, I would appreciate everyone's support here for with fellow board members in this, in our supervisory union, because some don't see it that way. Mm -hmm. um, the, where we're at now, and in that letter it said you could vote local budgets if you so choose. I think, and this is my opinion, professional opinion, that having separate budgets voted at different times is not a good thing for Washington Central because of tax rates. Because in Callis and Berlin, where they're now putting local budgets for their elementary forward, I cannot tell you what the tax rate will be. I can give you a range. And so I think it's better with the four that are left is to have a unified date going forward. Um, as I was teasing you, Scott, at the beginning, uh, you know, there are amendments up for vote. There's a second amendment that's up, a second bill that's up for vote tomorrow for about a delay, which would bring five districts would be one of the five that would have a year delay. If that, that would then need to go through the Senate, get through the Senate and be signed by the governor before it would have an act to change us or the court case could change us. So I'm still kind of following the executive committee's direction from back in August, which has had many paths to get there. And my, um, I think that's the right thing to do. I think there's gonna be a point, I'm not there yet to say, hey, we should do this some certain date and take the attorney generals, that's my advice. It's not my uh, authority though, it's board's authorities. I wanna be clear with that. Um, but I think it should be done with the four remaining boards together because we should be able to, at least for three of our towns, be able to say, we do know the tax rates because we've been able to put all this together as best we can with the estimates we have. Because mm -hmm. there are always estimates, as you all know. <clears throat> um, I don't feel we're, I think, you know, I think mid-May is kind of that, we gotta do something by midway, May, either way. I don't feel the pinch right now. Um, it's not the way things have been and so that change is difficult as the saying goes or change is hard for people but I don't think not having a budget voted on town meeting is the end of the world I think getting into the second half of May yeah now we're starting to push them loads. the reason I say that is because if we do it in the beginning of May and it were defeated we could come back in June for a second vote before we get to the June 30th that's things get tough when we get into the June 30th and then we're at a restriction by statute of how much percentage of the previous year and I can, Without having the statute, I'll misquote it probably in front of me. It's somewhere 90 to 95 percent of the previous years. Mm -hmm. But I don't, I'd have to go look into the actual percentage. Um, so I think that, you know, it's something we should be talking about. It's something that, you know, it's, if we get further along and, um, you know, we're going to, right now, I sent a letter to the town clerks this morning just updating them that, you know, we're still planning on, and they were asking. You know what's up with the district organizational meeting on February 19th and I said I'm still under the warning that we're hosting that meeting so um, it's not that so I don't give you a definite Scott but it's no, just I, no, no I just want you to know my thinking because yeah, sure and sure. I'm trying to think about what I'm most concerned about is confusing the voters Absolutely. And I think I mean, having just, multiple budgets at multiple times <clears throat> That's confusion. So I'd rather wait and be a little patient than to have multiple things happening. When they're straightforward, they're confusing to voters. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, as a board member, they're confusing. I mean, so, having six, yeah. Where does that leave teacher contracts? So teacher contracts, um, that will be some decisions that we'll have to make. By, by the current con negotiated agreement, we have to present contracts to the teachers by April 15th. Mm -hmm. I usually try to do it as quickly as possible after a budget is adopted to get to start the process because they have 30 days to notify us if they'd like to accept the contract. And there is a hiring rate that goes on in Vermont. As in, you know, there's the first wave after town meeting. There's actually a wave going right now, which is special educators for next year. Mm -hmm. We're already out in that because we've got some anticipations but we're not sure but we if you're not hiring for a special educator by 
March 15th, you're probably not going to get a one that's endorsed in that area because there's such a low, uh, so there are so few candidates. Thank, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Losing my words. The pool's so small. Um, why we're this conversation has been happening at the negotiation table. I think it's probably fair enough for me to say, mm -hmm. Carl, between the association and the board okay. leadership there in negotiation. So, um, I think it. I think I can say this is that there's been an agreement to try to get things wrapped up. Yeah. Negotiations. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So we can say we're done with that part of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think it's possible that if we have our budget vote on a non-standard, in a non-standard time frame, there may be different dynamics that we haven't really thought through that we need to, we'll need to kind of try to as much as possible to anticipate and, you know, get ahead of the curve. Totally agree. Well, I'm at totally this agree. point, it's going to be non-standard. Mm -hmm. yeah. It can't be town, yeah. it's too yeah. late right. for town meeting day. Right. I totally agree. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. that's something we need to think about. But thank you. Yeah, yeah. that's the best of my thinking. As of, I, I say this to everyone, on anything Act 46, let me put the date and time stamp on it because it might change. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> well, and, that's my best thinking as of Wednesday night. In <laughs> terms of town Great. meeting preparations, I will come Monday night at 6 o'clock because we have to hold a meeting. Oh. And Steve and I will have a lovely conversation. And we've got a lot to catch up on. Yes, we do. And then we'll go home. So okay if you are more than welcome. Anybody yeah. can do this. It's, it's a warm meeting. Okay. So absolutely. It's our annual meeting. Right. right. It's our annual meeting. And yeah. if you want to come, that would be lovely. But no one has to come. We don't really even have a budget. I mean, we have a budget to talk about. The youth are the two part of it. Right. But we don't even usually do that in a normal year. I just want to see if anybody shows up. <laughs> <laughs> there hasn't been for the past two years. Yeah. No. Um, Very quiet. So when, when there was a budget on the table. <laughs> um, so just to back up to the, this conversation of timing of con our contingency uh, budget vote. Um, two, so two of the towns will vote on town, town meeting. Is it Callis and Berlin? Callis and Berlin. Yep. yep. It seems like the other four budgets should be voted at, at the same time. I think so. So this is not just our decision. It has to be coordinated. Right. Um, so it wouldn't be till the next full board meeting that we have a plan. Well, plan. yeah, I mean, I think it's something that under, there's an agenda item for next week for Act 46. Okay. Might be a good one for <laughs> one of you to raise to say, hey, we've got four of us. We yep. should be talking. Yeah. Well, the the, and I'm gonna, I mean, the I'm, confusing I'm thing is that Berlin and Callis are going to have to vote on the U32 budget that that, that yeah, day. Yeah, so they will have to vote. Now we're going to have to vote that day. Yeah, yeah. that's a, and that's a piece like Scott just said. It's a non-normal. It's, yeah. Yeah. it's, yeah. it's Even abnormal. If voted, so yeah. there's going to be votes in towns that, and and we'll be running right. a special. So they're not voting yeah. on the U32 budget. At no, oh, yeah. so they yeah. will have to vote. Yeah. yeah, that'll be on their ballot. And and, and your recommendation is to wait. Um, so we know more information, yeah. um, but still allowing ourselves time for a revote in yeah. case it fails. Yeah, that's how why. Long, that's that's why I'm saying we have to warn it for how long. We have to warn it between 30 and 40 days okay. before the vote, and that's why I count that back from. I mean, I did not, the schedule. Remember the schedule I gave you, the yeah. readjustment schedule. <laughs> Everything that kind of sets the date of the May is that that's that last time in May okay. that we should be going for a budget vote, whether it's local or merged. So that, you know, that second, I think it was this, I'd look at my calendar, but it's like the second Tuesday in May or something like that. Um, Act 46 update. Why don't we it's wait and let the legislators yeah. give us the yeah. most recent yeah. when they get here. Um, Adrian, sorry. Chris has been messaging me on, on, the, on the document here. Chris. She, Krista. Yeah. And Krista. she said none of the senators are going to make it. Okay. We've got Janet yes. here. <laughs> okay, thank you. None? <laughs> Kristen knows I won't look at my phone during the day. Abe, I'll go left it. She's good, though. She's figured out. Okay, thank you. Um, 2018-19 calendar. Bill, this is sort of your meeting. Yeah, so um, as you may, you're most like most of you are aware, except for maybe Adrian, because the rest of you have kids here. Um, We've had six days 
that we've had to call four for snow and two for water. Mm -hmm. So right now we are at <coughs> the last day would be June twenty fifth. Uh, <coughs> which is a Tuesday. For students or teachers? <coughs> for <coughs> students. <coughs> and the last day for teachers would be the 26th of Wednesday. So, we have one in-service day between now and then. Excuse me while well, you've seen me before like this. Mm -hmm. um, which is on April 5th. So, that's in, for the rest of the district, that's um, parent-teacher conferences. And they're at four days. So what I'm trying to do is get it back at least one day. So I'd like you to accept my recommendation. And I think it, I just need your help. I think it's appropriate for the board to approve this, that we would turn April 5th from an in-service day to a day of school. Yeah. And that gets us back to five days. We're still working on other things. I also know that we haven't gone through March yet. March. February, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we even got through February. Yeah. March, March is warm and dear in my heart when I have to call snow days. Mm -hmm. It's almost as warm and dear as late November and early December. But two in November. But uh, Stephen did a lot of research, which shows that over the past ten years, we haven't even only one time have we gone above four snow days. So we're in an abnormal year. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that's what I bring to you. Um, I think it, you know, the, the calendar is always approved by a board. Usually it's the SU because we do an SU across, but um, that would be my recommendation to you. To so is there a motion to... Because it's U32 only right now. The elementaries yeah. are still at four. Is there a motion to accept Bill's recommendation to turn... Is it April 4th? April 5th. April 5th from an in-service day into a student day. So moved. And uh, second, second, Scott... Any more discussion on that? So what are we giving up? What is, what's the downside? Uh, we lose a day of in-service. We'll have to think about with the teachers, and I'll talk, I'm will talk. i actually talking to, to the association <clears throat> tomorrow about snow days and how we make that up. Okay. I mean, it was scheduled for uh, professional development? For professional development, yeah. yeah. So we'll have that 190 that we'll have to figure out because we are paying for that day. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Reports to the board. I'm going to go quick because we got five minutes. Um, Central Vermont Career Center. Nope. Not Student is there. not here. Administration. I, I would first add, and I'm going to hand this to Stephen and Jody real quick. Uh, hopefully, you saw I did a off cycle superintendent's report that was a couple weeks ago that I sent out an email to you. It's kind of mm -hmm. my January. Brought up some issues just so you. Some good celebrations and some, Frank, I'd have to pull it up, but um, I wanted to let you know some stuff on budgets and Act 46. Uh, City 16, get it, Annie. Yeah, yeah. which is great. I saw that the other day <laughs> on Monday. Yeah. We've Annie been, Jr. Yeah. yeah. Was done. Yeah, I'm trying to think. So the kids, you, I'm trying to think what the students would have said, too. Um, so their parents told them to stay home with the, the impending ice, so that's why they're not here. They send their apologies. <coughs> Gosh, since the last time we saw, we did finish up our semester, started a new one, really haven't had that many days of it, although we've been in it for three weeks now. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we it's are, there. yeah, it's, it's we, we've had, <clears throat> we're getting traction now on this semester, but it was, yeah, those unexpected water days were new to us. Um, and so we're, uh, we're developing some contingency plans for the future, so you know, this shouldn't affect us as deeply as, as it did when we have these water issues. Um, but uh, I would say that, you know, we're always, we haven't seen the kids that much in the I, last I, month. I just want to compliment Stephen. He did a nice job. He worked with the junior class the other day oh, yeah. on graduation requirements and a proficiency-based mm -hmm. learning system. Mm -hmm. And he did a nice job of explaining to them, uh, you know, how this works, what your opportunities are, how to, what you need to be looking at. I thought, I mean, I walked in about halfway through, but and I thought the juniors were really thoughtful in their questions and what they asked. Yeah, so I, I think um, we're, we're actually, so kind of the normal course of events for us during this time period is we would have met with our ninth grade parents or those that are going to be ninth graders next year but as we move into scheduling which is starting up tomorrow really is when we kind of kick off all of our scheduling for next year um and we would have answered some of their questions as they came in before they did scheduling but um 
everything's been thrown out of whack in terms of time. We're going to meet with them on the 21st now, um, and um, and so we met with the juniors. We're going to meet with the sophomores and the freshmen as well uh, to just kind of walk them through. Okay, here's what's happening. Here's where we're at with proficiency. Here's what we would expect you to be um, demonstrating at this point in time. Certainly, as we've talked about before, in freshman and sophomore years, you're not going to be demonstrating a, a lot of graduation level proficiency. But I think helping kids understand like how to judge where they're at in the whole system is really important. Um, and uh, and so we're going to be sending out a message to parents. I'll make sure that the board, I mean, most of you receive them otherwise, but I'll make sure that Thank you. Adrian receives it as well. Um, that just kind of a refresher on everything because it's been a little while since we've sent out any major like here's what's going on in proficiency land um, and so uh, so we'll get that out for everybody but I think we're just you know we're refining it more and more each time you know we're, we're they, the questions are, are getting much more specific as opposed to general which I think is really helpful um, because now we're talking about the details not the idea um, and so I think the kids were really thoughtful about some of their questions. And, uh, and one of the things that we talked about is that there may be opportunities this summer. We're looking at how we can run some summer uh, session um, for kids to, uh, to gain some proficiencies as well. If we're not looking at it as just being a remediation, but, but we have some kids who are um, like the career center who may or may not have the opportunities to get artistic expression um, uh, proficiencies demonstrated and so just providing some additional opportunities for kids is really what we're looking at with uh, summer school possibility we'll be bringing more information about that we're still in the early stages of planning um, and, and funding um, so uh, so we're looking at how we can do that and get that kicked off but I think that it's uh, something that we would like to pursue longer term um, more than just one year but like how do we open up summer time for some opportunities for kids to, to do some learning and, and really in, in uh, non-traditional kinds of ways. You know, that summer's a great time to kind of experiment with some unique projects and, and things like that. And this campus has, you know, we really don't use this campus in the summer for learning, but it's a great location. I mean, like, it's just, you know, we can't ask for more. And so we'll work on that kind of stuff. But I'll be, I'll be updating you guys more. I'm trying to compare some more stuff to the efficiency. So we're less than uh, three semesters away from first class graduating under proficiency. Yeah, yeah, that, that keeps me up at night. <laughs> yes. Um, is it is it um, are we in a place where you can project how many students are going to graduate, or is it? I, I think we're a little early. I think we'll have a much clearer idea as we reach the end of this year. But I mean, there's no reason why it shouldn't be a, the same percentage of kids graduating. I mean, we're. I mean, we're we're really um, we're really trying to make sure that we offer more opportunities for kids to demonstrate their learning. I think that's something that's a positive about all of this is that teachers are really trying to say, all right, how many different ways can we provide kids a chance to show what they know? And because the more opportunities we have, the more likely the kid is to be able to demonstrate that they're proficient. And so, I think we're just the, that's growing as fast as the need. I think is the way to. Kind of put it so I think we're going to be just fine when it comes down to it. Okay, we can't, we can't yeah. hold them all back. Solve our problem, no, 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 but not our behavior problem <laughs> at that point. Um, let's just we'll whip through these finance committee. Have you met? There's a report in here. Yeah, with updated information. It's just a monthly update. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a bit of a change in fund balance. How many, um, can I ask, uh, the tuition from other districts, 172,000. How many students is that? That is, well, wait, no, no that's 10. It's 10, 10 more. So 10 above what we, we projected. Budgeted, yeah. what we budgeted Correct. For. Yep. Correct. <clears throat> So that was in, right, we've intentionally been reducing the number of students that we budget for um, because we know that that number is going to shrink over these several years and we're ahead of the curve, mm -hmm. which is where we want to be. Yeah. 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 Executive committee, have you guys met? Um, we had a brief meeting in January. I, I don't have anything 
significant to her board. Yeah, okay. we need to do some business in there. Yeah. We've got a full board meeting yeah. next week. Yeah, right? Matthew's, yeah. Matthew and I met today yeah. to put those agendas together. And policy committee is holding off until yeah. everything settles down. Um, Janet, can I do two quick action items before we start? I know it's Absolutely. you okay. I'm hoping for some comments. I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to put you on the spot. But these shouldn't take very long, and then we'll be done. So, approve a motion to approve the bid for the auditorium wiring. Which is that? Is that what was here? Yes. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yep. In we, our. We need um, an electrician to come in from the outside and do some work. So. Yep. So on page twelve. It was electric. Electric. Um, yep. Twenty-four thousand four hundred dollars. Is there a motion to approve that bid? So moved. Karen and a second. A second. Scott. Questions? <clears throat> Excuse me. We've comments? used them before, so we have good. Mm -hmm. yeah. how, how many um, requests for proposals did you send out? And are you disappointed with this number of responses? No, there's only a couple of companies that do this kind of work in this area so we got to do two best okay. um, in terms of the bids they we talked to both companies prior um, but there's very few other companies that actually engage in this yeah, kind of work we're, we're okay. close to. Yeah. Okay. all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed that motion carries um, an approval to accept two leaves of <clears throat> two requests for a leave of absence both for pregnancies both at the end of the year um, <clears throat> Christine Chartrand and Adrian Wade. Did she say Kenny? Kenny. 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 Motion to accept those. I'll move it. Scott and a second. Second. Karen. Any questions about those? I'm assuming they're both coming back in the fall. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. <laughs> I had a question. Just yeah. Um, sick leave balance prior to request. How long are you allowed to accrue sick leave? Ninety days. You can accrue up to 90 without using them. Okay. So they roll over year after yep. year. 15 a year. Wow. That's very generous of us. Yep. Well, <laughs> I think it's a very very nods. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, only, it's only generous in comparison with other U.S. Yeah, within our yeah. country, yeah. yes, right. yes, yeah. I agree. I agree. The co-op, we say that's downright European. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Practically Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> Any other more discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And in a, do we have board orders that they sign? They are. I think they need it's your Carl? signature. Oh, yeah. Carl. Oh, Carl. A motion to accept the board orders. So moved. And second. a second. Do you have the amounts? So seventy-four thousand seven hundred and seventy-four and ninety-three cents. And the other one is one hundred and fourteen thousand six hundred and eighty-two and seventy-nine cents. Questions about those? Oh, look, Janet, we waited long enough. Yes. <laughs> Yay! Answer. I have one that I noticed uh, six thousand dollars in pizza kits from Little Caesars for a fundraiser. What's that? Yes, so that's money that flows through. So um, the purchase is made, the money comes in from the fundraiser itself. We have to pay Little Caesars for that. That's the uh, it's just eighth a pass grade. through. Yeah, it's just a pass through. The eighth grade uh, trip. This is one of their big fundraisers. Yeah. All set. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. That motion carries, and board communication. I think can I wait till can I can I just say something under the future agenda? I yes. Say it quickly to you, Ankari. Um, we will have the track bid next Wednesday, oh, okay. and we're having an SU. We we're trying not to have a U32 board meeting, but we'll need to have that to accept the track bid. Good. It's mm -hmm. in where the architect and civil engineers are checking references and checking some of the subcontractors right now, um, and to do due diligence, they needed a little more time. And we need to get it going so we can start planning and make that tight timeline for this. Yeah, summer. we want to get on their schedule. Right. Really so that would be our only agenda item after the full board meeting okay. next week. Yeah. Okay. So we would need a. Great. Right. Thanks. Meeting. Thank you. Okay. So you have to warn that. Yeah. Okay. We'll Welcome. Why don't you guys come on up, all four of you?
the hard <laughs> salts. Come on, Wendy. Yes. <laughs> no, no, two, two of our members are in a public hearing right now, but they have to be. Public. Yes, yeah. And Kimberly. And right. Kimberly and Ken yeah. yeah. both. And yeah. Ken said he was hoping that he might be able to get here a little later, but I We're, not count. I don't know if you got the message, and Krista, my assist, administrative assistant, was trying to send out to everybody, you know, use your best judgment. We're going to try oh, to I keep it so much short. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> she was, she, this was like 10 minutes before the meeting. She's like, all right, what are you guys doing? So I they're Vermonters. They're like, fine with the roads. No, I was thinking, like, I, I never want to postpone things because you just going to, but I was thinking, but I'm tired tonight. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to try definitely by 730 and maybe earlier since we're such a small group. Um, because I really appreciate you guys coming. I know snow is one thing, ice is something completely different. Well, it also, uh, oh, Anne, there's some more people coming. I saw in the hallway yep, half an hour ago. Okay, she said she was coming. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. Great. Right. It's, I, I suppose I. Ah, Welcome. Yeah. Let's see. So you saw Ann Cummings in the hallway of the Capitol. At, 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 okay. right. at, at, at the State House half, half an hour ago, and she said she was, okay. yeah, there's. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. You can do that. I don't know if I printed that. Okay. Um, I'm going to start. I'm Adrian McGee. I'm the chair of the U32 board, and we're really glad to have you guys here. And we were just talking about how badly we plan this in terms of the weather. It seems like every other year it's a bad it's year, a bad. but here we are. How incredibly well you planned it in terms of <laughs> state house action. <laughs> 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 it's just a coincidence. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, and why don't we just go around the room? We can introduce ourselves really quickly. Um, Scott, go ahead. Scott Thompson from Callis, and thank you. You were magnificent. Kira Bradley from East Montpelier. <laughs> Anne Donahue from uh, Northfield, representing Northfield in Berlin. Janet Anselm from Dallas. And we would love to hear, can you guys introduce yourselves really quickly? Lindy Johnson, I'm on the East Montpelier School Board. I'm from East Montpelier. Uh, I'm Amy Matt. John Brabant, Callis Select Board. Betsy Power, Callis. Dave Power, Callis. Anne Wheelock, Callis. Jim, we want Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Jody. Jody Emerson, associate principal here at 832. I'm Stephen Bell. I'm the principal here at 832, Berlin resident. <laughs> Bill Kimball, superintendent of schools, Washington Central. Carl Whitkey, the 32 rep from Worcester. And Kari Bradley from East Montpelier. And so in the past, we've run this as an open discussion. We've given the legislators <laughs> time to talk about what's going on. Pretty good time to do that today and then we'll open it up for questions from the public and from the um, the board members and the administration and I'm really going to try and be done by 730 so that people can get on their way um, and I don't know if you guys want to update us on what happened today some of us know some of us don't but I think that would be a good starting point I, I have to say it's always such a, a joyful thing for me on the house floor I'm sure this is a cross party lines thing when there's a a good, healthy, issues-based debate that has nothing to do with party positions, where you don't know who's going to stand up and you can't predict where they're going to be coming out on the, on the issue. Um, but um, we, uh, we took up a um, proposal for delaying um, the not, not changing Act 46, not uh, changing the uh, mandatory mergers of remaining districts, but giving an extra year time for those who um, were under mandatory orders. And uh, it, it failed by a, um, a, a actually fairly unusually close vote. It was uh, um, 74 Four. to 69. I think 74 to 69. Um, but the, the, the um, we're not finished because there was a compromise amendment that was presented by members of the Education Committee who had voted against, 7-4, against the um, uh, initial proposal, which would um, 
which would carve out and give that delay to some uh, districts and not others, depending sort of on their status. Uh, and um, that would actually include uh, this district in being eligible for a delay. Um, that would normally have been voted on this afternoon because we had a previously scheduled um, very large, expected large crowd public hearing starting at 430. We actually adjourned and will continue today's business tomorrow. So that vote will take place tomorrow afternoon. And I think it's fairly likely since the Education Committee recommended it that that will pass. Yes. So I think it's, I think it's likely that there will be a bill that goes to the Senate that has a delay in it, although the structure of it seems a little uh, odd. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say more about odd? <laughs> oh, well, it, um, it's, um, it has five categories, I think. It's and three of, out them, three of them are unique to, you know, one's for Huntington and one's for uh, uh, Wyndham, I think. I can't remember the one other town. Um, but there are two big categories, and, and the two big categories, one is if you um, uh, agreed on articles of agreement and you submitted them to voters and one of your towns rejected it, um, then you are, then you have a July 1, 2019 deadline. Um, but if you didn't agree on articles of agreement and you never submitted anything to voters, then you have till 2020. I guess the theory is you, you've done a lot of the homework already, so it's just about it being uh, mandatory, so yeah. you don't need a lot more time to work that out. Um, whereas if you were working on an alternate plan, so you never did that piece, you yeah. do need more time. Yeah. So that, you know, there's, yeah. there's, there's some, some, logic. some logic to yeah. it. It seems yeah. like a, a sort of micromanaging in a way. but. But I do think um, that's right because the vote was so close on the broader one, and this comes with the support of the committee. Uh, it, it does seem likely to pass. On the other hand, it would be good to have a member of the Senate. I ran into a member of the Senate at lunch today, and yeah. her opinion as one member was, "Oh well, the Senate has absolutely no intention of taking that up." That's just one person. I, I don't know if she. I don't even know what committee she's on. It was Alex Nate, but I. So, um, so I, I actually don't know at all where the Senate is on the issue. Questions about that? Nothing but questions. <laughs> <laughs> but, but that's okay. I'll just leave yeah. that. <laughs> Sounds like you listened to some of the yes. debate there. Um, I, I had the bird's eye view oh, among yeah. some. Okay. So you heard the, yeah. the uh, but it was, it was of, yeah, it was Yeah, it was very great. interesting. It was very interesting. It was very interesting. interesting. And I agree with him. We don't very often have debates that, that um, are just, that are not driven by um, party affiliation or something. Was, and actually, really, school funding, um, anything education related, tends to cut across party lines. I mean, that's just the way it is, mm -hmm. um, not surprisingly. But it was, but it was a, a real debate, and I didn't. I don't think any of us knew how it was going to come out. Is, is there is there any consideration of undoing Act Forty Six at this point? No, no I, I would say from the tenor of the debate, no. I mean, this was, I, this, this was like pushing a rock uphill. Yeah, okay. this was just yeah. a delay. Yeah, and I think I would I would be astonished if, if uh, um, get rid of it. Also had any momentum at all. Yeah, I mean, I, I had a perspective that says it said maybe maybe we need to relook at the exact process for how a final conclusion got made. Um, you know, at the at that very end point, um, how much weight is given to the different things, um, and that's something where I would really have liked to see the the education committee, the committee of expertise and jurisdiction take a hard look and say, did this happen the way we thought and expected and intended? Um, but based on that committee's response to even the idea of delay, which was a 4-7-4 uh, vote against it, um, that, that's clearly not going to happen. So yeah. I mean, that was part of why I signed on to the, the bill that Janet introduced. 
um, that included relooking at some of that, and that clearly. Um, and the, the two ideas that I, uh, well, I'm putting aside the whole question of debt, but I won't talk about that right now. But, <laughs> yeah. um, but the putting aside the, the um, two issues that I really wish the committee had grappled with was the need for an evaluation um, and, a, and a, uh, an evaluation that the proposal I had had it happen in stages, so there would be stage one this December, um, and then two years out, and another two years out, because this is such a this is a major change in the way we govern our schools, and I think we need to know whether it we're actually achieving the goals, and we're not doing that. When we should put money behind it, and we should put our um, you know um, our open minds behind it. And the other thing, which I introduced in a separate bill that I still hope maybe might get some attention, um, is would say that um, you can't close a school unless the town in which the school is located um, votes yes. And I understand that that's been a source of um, uh, difficult consensus to find. Um, but I just sitting from where I sit, um, it's a lot of what people are worried about. Yeah. And so I think that the legislature says this is the role. Um, then you take that off the table and you can negotiate other things. So I have that bill in as well. I just did that by myself. I didn't bother getting co-sponsors, but it probably could have gotten a lot. Um, but that's also just sitting in the committee. Other questions? People in the audience? And it doesn't have to be about education necessarily. Or Ash 46. Ash 46. Yeah. 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 Um, just very quickly, we got a, a little bit of an update from the Agency of Education about budgets. Usually when we come here, we talk about sort of where budgets are coming in and where we think tax rates are going to fall. Um, the, the, um, letter, you know, the commissioner writes a letter on December 1st and kind of gives us a, a, their best um, estimate based on, on consensus figures. And um, right at the moment, I think 22% of budgets are in, you know, a really small number, um, and that they're a little higher than, than the assumption. Um, so we like to see them a little lower, but that's... I would just say, we, we haven't been able to submit our budget yet. I, I'm so, they're, they're, the but, ones they have. And that was part of the, yeah. of the dialogue that we had with um, Brad James, who was the one who came in, was, yeah. you know, what's, what is, how is this going to play out when we've got yeah. communities that don't really know um, how to how to write the budget and we're aware of them? No, well, I'm not saying from that point of view. We were told by AOE not to submit all this as a force merger, so I just want to be clear on that. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyway, that, so the, those figures. So we what we'll do is we'll get a weekly so that, that starts in our committee. Mm -hmm. um, we'll get a weekly update from them yeah. so that um, by town meeting they we would hope we would have some idea of where things are going, but um, I don't know. For sure. Adrian, I would ask something, but it's not 46 or budget related, so I'll let people have a chance with any, uh, Janet on any of those, but another education topic. Well, Amy had wanted to speak. And I know Amy wanted no. to say something. Do you want to say yeah, something? Yeah, I do. Um, so I'm here kind of in a piece of research. Um, I own an auto repair shop in Montpelier. I live in, or it, it's in Montpelier, I live in East Montpelier. I'm very connected with the industry on a state level and on a national level. So on the state level, I'm on the advisory board of the automotive um, shop, or the class over at Barry. Um, I've gone and I've spoke to all the different high schools and some of the secondary schools. Um, very tied in with the school up in Hyde Park because it's awesome. Um, Todd Bedard, who's their automotive teacher, is like one of the best teachers I've ever met nationwide. They're very, very lucky to have him. Um, so within the industry, I was the, um, I'm the past president of Women in Auto Care, which is a national group for women in the whole aftermarket. Um, I do consulting with ASE certification, which is the certification that uh, technicians can voluntarily take to prove their skill um, level of what they do. Um, I'm also part of the part of the Auto Service Association, which is the association for all shop owners in the country. 
And if you talk to any shop owner, dealership, anybody who uses auto technicians in their business, what their number one problem is, they're going to say, I need help. There is a huge shortage of technicians. And it's not even technicians, it's welders, plumbers, electricians, and owners. So within the industry, we created a program, a nonprofit called Tech Force. And we were trying to, because everybody had these different silos within the industry that was trying to gather awareness that there is such uh, career opportunities in the automotive world. And so Tech Force was created to take all the different places and say, hey, let's all go under one roof and take all of our scholarships, because there's so much money for people coming into the automotive industry, and put them all in one place and create one message. So we've been doing this for three years, and we're just not gaining any traction. So I started, everywhere I went, I started asking questions. And I was up at Hyde Park talking to the whole school of the, the, you know, the technical side of it. And I gave them a presentation, and afterwards, the guidance counselor of the school came up to me and said, I need your help. And I said, how can I help you? She said, we cannot get students to come to our school. And I was like, I'm shocked, because every time I go to this school, I want to go to this school. <laughs> At the college level, it's so amazing. And I was like, what's the problem? And she said, we don't know. We're doing advertising, blah, blah, blah. So being in an automotive world, where we, I fix people's cars, you have to ask questions because they don't know and you just keep asking them questions to find out what the symptoms and the problem is so then we can fix it because we're fixers. So I started asking her all the questions and what I think I found and then I called um, the executive director at Tech Force and said, oh my God, I got this huge piece of the puzzle here. Is this a Vermont thing or is this a national thing? We think it's a national thing. So I'm now gathering information. So what we're finding is that every student has a dollar sign over their head. And like when I wrote down the $122,000 for 10 students, that's like $12,200 for that student. 17. It's like 17. 17. 17. It was 172. $17,000 for student. Yeah. OK. So each kid has got a dollar sign over their head. So if that kid goes to the Bo Tech School, the money goes, some of that money goes to the Votech school. Right? All of it? Or? Pretty much all of it. Okay. And sometimes so that more. Money goes <laughs> to the Votech school. So right now there's this, nobody has any money. Um, the high schools don't have their less student population, less money, trying, everything's more expensive. And so the, the guidance counselor of the Votech school was saying, we're not able to get these students in because the high schools don't want to let go of the students because when they let go of them, there goes the money. And so who on average, not always, but on average, who ends up going to the VOTEC schools, and I'm going to be very blunt, are the kids that the high school doesn't want to deal with, they're pain in the butt, they've got behavioral issues, let's throw them over to the tech school and maybe they'll learn some kind of skill and they'll actually be able to know how to do something. And so they're not getting the brightest and the best kids who then they're told college, 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 and which, which we know in this day and age costs a lot of money. And these kids come out of college with these huge debts and they aren't always able to get jobs. Whereas in the automotive industry, electricians, plumbers, you know, all these skills, they come out of high school and they can start making really good money and they would stay in Vermont. And so, <laughs> so I want to understand if that is the reality of it, because if it is, Tech Force, we are going to completely change our message because then we're understanding why we can't gain any traction, and we have this whole vision of creating like a whiteboard video of kids with the money over their head being tunneled over to the schools and the Votech schools saying, come here and actually learn how to do something, and trying to get the dollars this way. So that is part of my search, is to understand how it works. And if that's so, then we're failing our students because it becomes about the money and not about the children. 
And these students, especially students who are tactile learners, they learn with their hands. Those are the perfect kids to be going to the Votech schools. In the automotive industry, cars have changed. I went to high school in the 70s, and kids who couldn't actually, you know, have trouble with math and science and reading and writing. They did well in automotive. Those kids don't do well in automotive anymore. <laughs> yeah. We have computer on wheels, and what is coming rapidly down the pipe are a hybrid into electrical cars. And we're seeing them already, and the amount of money I spend on scan tools and equipment is crazy. And I send my technicians to Kansas and Florida and very far away to get the training to be able to stay up with current technology. Because it's happening so rapidly, there is going to be a time, I will predict, five, ten years from now, there will not be enough places for people to get their cars fixed because the technicians won't have the training, the other shops will start closing because they won't know what to do about it, and we cannot find technicians to fill our bays. So to circle back to that, my question is, is that a roadblock to kids getting into the Votech schools? Is the whole money thing? And are the school and the guidance counselors here saying, no, 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 bright, smart kid, you need to go to college and not talk about, well, what are your interests and what do you like to do? And maybe you would want to go down that road and think about that. Um, and if that is so, who would I talk to on the state level? Who is in charge of that stuff that policy can be changed? within our schools so kids can find a successful track that works for them. I think you want to talk to Jody first. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We actually have talked to Heather. <laughs> we did. We did. So, obviously I'm not sending people away from tech schools and the reason I say that is because my son actually is a tech student um, in an automotive field. Um, I think that we work really hard to get the message to our students that we want them to be in a career, college, whatever the next step in learning is ready, um, and we're not trying to send them in a specific direction. We have heard the message from um, tech centers that they, in a way that sounds like, and it, I'm not going to say it's a direct quote, but it sounds like they want a different kind of student, so I hear what you're saying about there's some needs out there that may not be met by the student that most traditionally goes there. Mm -hmm. I would say that um, we compete with other schools and all of the students that want to apply to the tech center, everyone has the opportunity to see their presentation for our local tech center. Um, they do apply. They, this year we've actually changed the process so that they interview at the same day they visit. So that takes another <coughs> step out easy and early. Um, but there are not enough positions in our tech schools either. Um, so often take automotive. There might be 16 openings and there's 38 students competing for those openings. So there may be more to it than um, <coughs> students not feeling like they know all the options ahead of them. I think there, there is a component of there's not quite enough of the programming out there to meet the needs of the students that want to get in either. That's not what I'm hearing when I'm at the more tech schools though. I, I would. My son was waitlisted at one, and luckily I knew that if that happened, he could go to another one, so he dual applied and mm -hmm. was able to get into a different one. But lots of different things could happen. I know that I would not say to someone that they shouldn't go down the path if they wanted to. The, the, I feel like the problem with the Barry School, because I've been to all of them, and, um, and again, I'm a very blunt person. The Berry School has a reputation that goes with it. As what the kids call it, they call it Scary Berry. And so there's a lot of kids within the high school that look at the VOTAC and they say, well, that's where all the losers go. I don't want to go there. I'm going to stay here with my friends. So there's, there's a piece of that that goes with it with the Berry VOTAC. Um, not so much the High Park one because it's right there beside the high school. 
and um, it's just a remarkable facility. The amount of money they poured into that place is just amazing, whereas Barry didn't have that complete facelift that Hyde Park did, and it does have a reputation. Um, I would be very interested to be here when they do their presentation. I'd be very interested to see how they do it. And is it like, is it a mandatory thing, or is it just that anybody who's interested goes and to the presentation? It's a callback where people can choose to go in. Okay. Um, so there's a little bit of notification that goes out in advance. Students can choose to go there. TAs recommend um, to their entire TA. This is happening. You can go. Okay. And usually students from the program come and they have a, a digital media presentation that they use. Mm -hmm. But there's students that are from all the schools that go there that come and go from school to school giving this presentation. Okay. That would, that would be interesting because I've been a lot of kids. You know, again, scary Barry, I'm not going there. They would never go to the presentation to see even what it is. I think there are some other issues, too, that we need to address overall in our career technical education. I know the governor's actually, this is one of his big um, educational agenda items. Um, but uh, we don't also look at technical education across the range that it can be. So when we talk about career technical education, um, there is a tendency for it to be trade oriented, mm -hmm. which is, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying this is bad, but there are other areas of career and technical education. So advanced manufacturing is an area that, that is popular. Um, nursing mm -hmm. um, and medical professions is certainly an area that's important. Um, we also don't pay any, I, I would challenge us to find the program that is around IT. Um, that is a part of some career and technical education programs. I think um, we're a little slow in Vermont to catch on to the, how broad um, career and technical education can be. I know personally, um, I came from a career academy before I came here, but I was an IT career academy. Um, and then um, some of the places that I visited, um, I think one of the most amazing programs I've ever seen is actually in Las Vegas. Um, in their school system and their career and technical education program had uh, fashion design. Um, it had um, it had a diesel program that I I would put up against any I've ever seen in my whole life. Um, but they had a broad range of things that attracted a broad range of students. Mm -hmm. When we look at career and technical education as being very narrow, kind of just those trades focus, you do tend to attract one type of student. Mm -hmm. And so I think broadening the the base there. Of, of what can be offered. I think the other thing that we, um, we we really need to figure out how to do better is the apprenticeship programs that go beyond career and technical education. And that's where we get into so many pieces of red tape around OSHA requirements and Department of Labor requirements and all those that kids can't necessarily take advantage of the opportunity to even go into a shop because as you know, Insurance isn't going to cover them because OSHA isn't covering. You know, there, there's just this whole litany of things that can happen uh, because of the equipment that's used in some of those shops. And yeah, so, we we always have a high school kid. Right. In. I mean, it, you know, they usually come from Barry because you know we're part of. Right. Because it's the local. Yeah. Yeah, and they do have insurance. Um, so there there is that. Now, I mean, I've had kids come in forever, and I have one kid that came from Barry Votech. God, it's been almost 20 years, um, and he's still with me. I mean, he came right out of high school, and this kid is, you know, now he's not a kid anymore, right. but um, amazing. And now he's a, you know, certified master technician, um, sure. and he's my lead guy, but he came right out of high school, um, which was very cool. So you, you asked about the funding piece, and I think this is a piece where we can turn to our legislators okay. and really ask the question. Um, that would help us, and some of it's an infrastructure question. So when we look at a career and technical education program, ours serves a vast number of towns. The, our Central Vermont Career Center, formerly known as Barry Tech, mm -hmm. um, it serves a lot of people, but if they need to do an upgrade to the facilities, there's really no mechanism for them to upgrade because the bond has to be done from their local school board, um, which, it, it turns into a, it, turn, it just turns into a, a nightmare uh, because they then have to finance it as one town, 
versus um, everybody uses it. Correct. And so, not that I am proposing that we all get bonded, because I know that's a whole different issue, but I think that in many states, what I've seen is that um, career and technical education is usually funded from the state level mm -hmm. as opposed to the local level um, in the way that they create some of the funding formulas for it. And that's probably where there's a lot of legislation in that, though, and I, I, I yeah. don't want to push us in that direction, but that's. Yeah, that's you what can I was. See the sense of it. Right. Yes. Right. Yeah. You can see the sense of it. I, I would also say, Amy, where I was going, as you were pointing out, we have a structural problem in Vermont. Yeah. And the way we've been doing career and technical education, I'm not sure that we should continue down that path. Because I don't think we can offer it to all kids. Let's, let's forget the funding piece for a minute. Just be a U32 student. And you want to go over and take automotive mechanics, it's over in Barrie. So if you're having to take busing to get there, we're spending an extra hour on a bus to get there. And so we've just taken a six and a half hour day and made it a five and a half hour day. Mm -hmm. And by the time we get there, now we're down to a probably a four and a half to five hour day. So we've taken the learning time for learning away. Now we're moving, we are almost finished with our move to a proficiency world where we're trying to take the time out of it and the learning is the constant. Mm -hmm. But our students that are trying to access that at the same time, many of them want to work in the afternoon. So we, I think we need to stop thinking of technical education, career technical education as a place, as one of our 13 regional technical centers. I think that's one thing Act 77 did for us. I thank the legislator for that, for flexible pathways and learning. I know both Ann and Janet were there for that. Um, and it's something that can really help open up and that's one of the things that's happening. You know, we talk about branching out in our pilot system. We have kids out learning technical trades through that instead of going to the tech, the technical center. Because then they have more flexibility in what they want to do. You talked about having a different caliber student. Jody's told me a lot about her son. He's hopefully going off to college soon from being in a technical center mm -hmm. for two years to get a real in-depth bachelor's, right? Associates. associates, okay. We're hoping for bachelors. We're hoping, yeah, we'll get them to a bachelor's. <laughs> associates first. And, and auto mechanic work. And, and I totally agree with what you said, that the, the level of complexity has gone way up in the industry. And if you do the, the knowledge it takes to be career ready in a trade versus college ready, it's higher in the trade. Mm -hmm. Well, we need to be supporting those kids. And when we're taking away time, going wrapping this all the so way back. So what I'm hearing you is, is say is they don't go there; they would just go right into a shop in the shop. I, I would. I, I don't have the answer, Amy. Okay. What I'm saying is we have a structure. I'm identifying okay. the problem. I'm not saying there's an answer yeah. right now, but I'm saying that if we keep thinking about <laughs> career technical center happening in one place for learning for all kids, I don't think that is the answer anymore. Couldn't it be, I mean, in a sense, it, doesn't it become kind of like a pilot school for them where they would just go there and they don't need to come here? We have, so to, we have to look at they, that's, they, one you know, that's one possible. That's one possible right. solution. Because, they yeah. have, because it's so technical, electricity, oh, yeah. plumbing, all that, they, they have to go to school. Yeah. Um, so they need to be in that classroom as yeah. much as yeah. possible, hands on. Right. That could, that could be a possibility. That could be a way that works. I, I just know we, what I'm trying to say is I agree with you, but we have to look at the structure. To change the way Looking at the structure right now is okay. not serving students anymore in 2019. Okay. In the way I, th or best serving. It is serving kids. I don't want to say it's not. I misspoke. Mm -hmm. I think we could do a better job rethinking the structure. And I'd like to reiterate that we do send money to, to Central Mark Career Center for the kids. But I do believe that the administration doesn't discourage kids to go because we're losing money. Because those are our kids and we want them to do what they need to do in order to graduate. Um, and I it's, need somebody to fix my car. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a budget, it's a budget line and we know every year and it's pretty much in and out, you know, the money comes in for that kid and then it goes out. Right now I think we're paying more to bury tech. No. No, we're paying more than we did in the past. Right. Um, their price has gone up. But I really believe that we're not saying, no, you can't go because we're losing money. Okay, well, I, we, I don't think, I don't we, think we operate that way. But, um, yeah, no, but I just want to make yeah. that clear. But I also think it's a society thing. I, of our community, yes. 
and our community thinking yep. that that is not good enough for their children. And the electrical work I had done on my house was a student I had known from East Montpelier who went through the Career Center and it's the best work versus the professional I had had before. Well, he's a professional, but mm -hmm. the older person who did electrical work and then was stopped for a DUI after working at my house, which is not a good thing. Like <laughs> but um, this young man vacuumed and cleaned and did all the stuff behind him, and it's the best electrical work we've had. Mm -hmm. And he went through the Career Center in Barry. But I also think our communities as I went through the whole fight to have AP at E32 back when my children were here, um, and how, what a force that was, but not a force to expand right. the career center. And, and I, yeah, I, I think that's an important piece. We, we had a debate, I don't remember how long ago, four or six years ago, on, on the House floor, about some language that, that was talking about every child, you know, postgraduate education. We want a track where every child goes postgraduate education. And I said, you know what, that is not actually right for every child. No, and to right. assume and say, it's not success unless you've gotten some sort of post. And we did, we did change the language. I think the Senate changed it back. But, but, but I mean, I, it, it, was not, it was not something that, uh, it wasn't something that made a fundamental difference in terms of, of a bill, but it was philosophically, it was part of what's out there. I think you're right. And we, um, I was, you know, six kids in my family, um, five went to college, one did not. He now owns more property than all of his siblings combined, you know. <laughs> And, and you know, I would encourage um, all of you who are interested, but you particularly to, to take this discussion to the House Education Committee. Yes. There's a new chair. Mm -hmm. um, I think they're really open to looking at things differently, and I'd also make the observation that um, these things are really slow to change, and that it sounds as though some things are changing, but it just takes it takes a long time. So, so how does I one think, do that? Um, um, I can, um, I'm just trying to think what I can do. If you give me your um, contact information, okay. I will at least share it. Can't guarantee that you can get in there, but I will guarantee that I share it. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll see what happens from there. Um, but I think it's a it's a great discussion to have, you know, now that they've, they've, they've actually got lots of things to do. It's good to say now that they've moved back. They actually have a lot of stuff in front of them, but I think this is kind of interested in that. I don't think the solutions are simple or easy. Amy, right now I don't believe there's a bill on, on the wall at uh, the House Ed on Career and Technical Education. There was last session, but it may be something that um, if you keep abreast of the legislative, yeah. uh, if you look for the House Ed okay. Committee, you can see all the bills that are proposed. Yeah, okay. And it, you could testify for career, when they bring up Career and Technical. And yeah. it's usually what? Every year or two, there's at least some bill. But it, and it usually is. Yeah. And there doesn't need to be a bill because sometimes it yeah. can connect with another <laughs> bill or be included, or a committee can do its own bill if it wants to. And I just take up an issue that to their schedule. Right. I don't, I have yeah. nobody here from education, but it does occur to me that Dave Sharp, though, so actually used to work. In, oh, yeah. I mean, that's what he did was out over here. Um, yeah. Top. Yeah. Um, anyway, it, no chair, it might be something that okay. And if you think of anything, just pass it my way and I'll add it to um, our pile of investigation trying to figure out how to move things forward. Kari. Um, <clears throat> so this isn't an Act 46 question, but let me just start by saying that uh, part of the, our frustration with, with the past four years or so it um, has been that um, while we've been forced to talk about debt and one board and um, now articles of agreement or articles of disagreement, <laughs> um, it's, it's taken us away from the big picture, um, uh, well, I, would, I would use the word crisis that we're, we've now entered in terms of student population. Has to, you know, this is you, this is the big picture, yeah, right? Thank you very much. Yeah. This is the big picture for Vermont in a lot of ways, outside of Chinon County, is is the shifting demographics, low fertility rate, you know, all these all these things that 
I'm not sure, you know, how we sustain our, our schools. I mean, um, it, it feels like we're on the edge. And so I'm, I'm curious to hear, is this discussion happening in the, in the House and, and are there any solutions that people well, are Well, that's why we passed Act 46 to solve all that. <laughs> <laughs> The discussion is happening, but it's not Thank something you. Very funny. Not, you, can't, you can't require people to have babies, you can't require people to move in the state. Um, and, you know, the, the, we have this sort of um, inconsistent set of priorities. We think that the state's too old, I mean, you know, exhibit A. Um, but we also want to, um, you know, not tax Social Security and not tax military retirement and not tax this and not tax that so we can get more old people. Um, I think those things don't really make sense. So we talk about this stuff in various ways all the time. Um, and if there were a, a fix, I think we would be doing it. Um, but it's, you know, I, every, offering people $5,000 to move into the state, I don't think is the right <laughs> approach myself. Um, but those are the only things that we're coming up with. Yeah, those are the things that get the play. The other right. work is just hard and slow. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I wish I had a better solution. I, I agree. I don't, feel like I don't think that's the solution, but, um, yeah. but right now, you know, I don't have a, I think we all recognize our, we have a huge problem with demographics. And I, I think if the wall is built, we got to build a, a Bridge and express and express yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and the truth is that that encouraging immigrants yeah. to move to the yeah. state is part of the yeah. solution. Yeah. And we have an administration in Washington that's operating um, to make that very difficult. I think in Vermont, people are actually pretty receptive to it, including yeah. the governor and including members yeah. of the legislature. That that that's one of the things that we actually know will work. Um, a lot of the other things we don't know, but you know it's um, it, in this environment it's been difficult to do that. So, but, I mean that's I, I think it would benefit the state in a great many ways. Agreed, Kari. I would offer too. I sit on uh, the. Uh, Central Vermont Economic Development Council as well. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things that we constantly talk about, and we see it with our own staff, is that housing is, yes. is I mean, that's, you know, those are yes. those are the things yes. that, how do we provide ways for new housing to be built yeah. that is more moderate or lower income um, yeah. sensitive? And so I think that those are some things that, you know, we certainly see yeah. when we hire younger teachers here, right. they're living in Chittenden County. And so um, that automatically produces the first hardship. Um, and so you know, that's, that's certainly one of the things that I think is, it, it, we would kind of, it, there's not a business around the table that doesn't talk about how do we attract younger workers. Well, first thing we've got to do is find a way for them to actually live yeah. in our community. Yeah. Um, and so I think that those are some of the things. And there's, there's so much involved. Well, I mean, well, there are things that we're doing that well, there we, right. yeah, we actually can do some things there. I mean, we're working on, you know, we're increasing the credits for first-time homebuyers, the down payment assistance. Mm -hmm. um, we're working on. Pull up a chair. Pull up a chair. Pull up a chair. Come in over here. And the, um, there's another housing credit program. I can't think of the name of it that we're also working on. So those kinds of things we actually. Um, you know, we're, we're making small um, changes. The other, since nobody, I don't think anyone in here is in Jenny County. Part of the other thing that we do with is that a lot of the benefits when we look at tax credits and economic development activity tends to just migrate to Jenny County because that's where right. people are. And um, for those of us who are not from Jenny County, that's sort of a constant tension. Great. Thank you. Welcome and thank you very much. For coming, is it nasty out there? Yes. Yes. We just had a, a big public hearing, as you probably know. Both, um, I should, I'm Kimberly Jessup. I serve state rep for East Montpelier and Middlesex. I'm Kevin Golson, I'm a Fiore Berlin state rep. And both Ken and I serve on House Judiciary, and we just did a public hearing tonight on reproductive uh, health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm.
Well, yeah. thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you very much. Can I uh, just, uh, I want to know what you're hearing on the ethnic studies bill. I know that that's been kind of fast-tracked. That passed the House. It did pass the House? Passed okay. the House and it's in the Senate. There was a, uh, a couple bumps in the road that, okay. that, that kind of got worked out. And yeah. um, I think what we passed uh, had was really, really strong vote, 140 to, to legislative body does not set curriculum and there was no blurring of those edges in discussion yet this was a, a body that was formed to then provide advice that then is acted upon by the decision makers in the education system I hadn't heard that it passed so oh, as yeah. a Friday must have passed Thursday or Friday of last week it did. yeah Questions or? There's going to be some questions. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the expression that everything's been said, but not everyone's said it. <laughs> no, I, I just, since um, our new arrivals, I just wanted to thank our U32 town representatives for um, sticking up for us and for being strong. Very much appreciated and helping us. Get real, real close on that vote. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, I was thinking about that on the way over, and um, some of the discussion that we've heard in this room, and I, I think everyone in this room practices it, is that we need to think of this as all of our kids, right? When we're not divided by town, and when I was thinking about some of the floor debate and listening to people, I looked at our in our own subcommittees, in our own town boards, and and we do have so many differences that I think we need to be thinking of each other and try to keep working hard, as I have said to many of you, I have the deepest respect for all the tremendously hard work that has gone on. And But I feel like one of the things that became really clear to me on the floor today, listening to this debate, is just like we care about everybody's kids, we care about everybody's towns, and we care about all the kids in those towns. And I personally am really hoping that we can find a way forward that works as best as possible for as many as possible. And I know that's a heavy lift, but I, I remain an optimist. Everybody is definitely <coughs> very passionate. Everybody in this room, anybody that does public service. And when you're in the, the chamber, I'm the newbie in there and stuff like that, and you see it firsthand uh, at a much different level. Uh, uh, there's just a lot more people that we represent. We just try, and everybody's got their own thing that they try to do, and then you try to, what I see today was a lot of people trying to work together, which is really, really nice. I, I will say that um, I've seen the sentiment expressed, and I agreed with it, that it feels like there's just so much work and effort that's gotten to this point, and that any delay really just lets the grumbling and arguing and people, there are people who are just never going to agree, just keep disagreeing for another year. I agree. And, yeah. yeah, and it's like, can we just get our articles of agreement and find the way to merge and make it happen and then get back to the work we were doing <laughs> for our kids. And a delay is just gonna let the arguing and grumbling keep going for another year. 
and the budget doesn't happen and I don't know what's going on and <laughs> so yeah, limbo happens. Yeah. Yeah. And so and here we so are. So it just another, delays the inevitable. So. But it seems like the, the difference is the delay is for the kind of the new conversation. If you wait, now you can't keep fighting over what we are or aren't going to do because now we're stuck with what has to happen. But now we do need the time to follow through and, and do that as best as we can. So mm -hmm. I think that was the But it feels idea. like that, that year, mm -hmm. the, the thing that that year does, though, is that people who still disagree with it to fight it that's, for another year. Not accept true. and take a year to make it happen peacefully. Right. It gives a year for it to keep fighting and let's keep going to court. And so. So, yeah, so yeah. I think from the people I spoke with, that's why the committee didn't endorse the delay. Right. That was what that they was heard. That yep. was the, the testimony they heard convinced them that people were going to continue to fight right. if, they, if they gave the delay. And so they they actually initially had, had supported it, and then they backed off it. Yeah. And that's why. That, so, so And I, that's where I would support I, a delay. If, if everyone came to the table and said, you know what, let's just, we'll throw this lawsuit out, we'll all come kumbaya and make it all work. If you just give it a year, then I'd be at that table <laughs> singing. <laughs> but that's not. I, I, I hear what you're saying, and I, I got it from my colleagues, so we got it on the floor. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, this is uh, um, the delay. Um, it makes sense to me. Um, but from where I sit, and that's partly because I think our community is not ready for this yet, just kind of talking about the community of people in the town itself, um, and need time to sort of process and, and um, um, have a conversation about what the school is going to look like and what we're, gonna, what we're doing for our kids. I don't really feel like that's happened as much as it should. Um, but, um, but you're right, there will be some people who will not use it productively, they will right. use it to keep it. Um, but it would also maybe give people who are still just in limbo a year to feel like it's not the end of the world. Yeah. And I think that's important. Mm -hmm. My own sense is that the Education Committee may find that it wants another year because as was pointed out in some of the debate, some of the things didn't quite work out the way the legislators thought back in 2015. And this is why your evaluation idea would be so um, important. No matter what. Yeah, no matter yeah, what. No matter what. Yeah. But we had five years to have a vote. And there were blockades all along the way to not allow voters in the five towns a say. Mm -hmm. A committee talked, and people came, a handful of people came to every meeting. But there was never a vote to find out what people, the electorate really felt. Okay. And I think that is kind of shame on all of us as a town. I have to disagree with you. No, I know, no. I, because we followed the process. No, we, followed, we had that super majority business. But and that, that blocked. It, no, but it worked exactly as it was supposed to. Um, In Europe. <laughs> no, 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 because the the vote was based on, a, on flawed information. But that's, sorry. We're getting into see what happens when we open up this <laughs> <laughs> Well, the delay is just to, so, in my opinion, continue. Yeah, and in my opinion, we're going to have the same argument for another year. I, yeah. I disagree yeah. with that, though, too, because <laughs> it's, it, the, the lawsuit is running its course. If the lawsuit loses, if the appeal fails, then, then that's that. There's, no, there's basically no other recourse. And we just have to make the best of it. 7.30. Any other last questions or comments? No, we should think of something nicer to say. Yeah, something I know. Well, the hearing on reproductive health, I'm interested. What was the big theme? Did you solve? Everything? Well, as you might imagine there was disagreement in that room. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you want to end it on a positive. <laughs>
could talk infrastructure, but that's a different issue because for U32, once the infrastructure of Montpelier fell apart, uh, we couldn't have school. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. so it's a mess down there. Yeah. So right. Oh, which it, that's right. With the water the, main. The very first yeah. water break, the big one, was yeah. kept closed us for two days right. um, right. because yeah. of uh, lack of water. Was amazing. And so, well, and then something they did didn't work. Cause, and so on Saturday there were six inches of water. No, that was a, that was a whole second break. Separate break. Separate break. That, that was actually the third break. There was yeah. a second break that came in there as well. Um, but yeah. we uh, we survived that one. Um, but, At least that was a Saturday. Because there was no school. <laughs> Did, we didn't lose water. Yeah. Um, but so infrastructure might be another great issue. Well, that would be yeah. at some point. Yeah. Can't wait to come back. To, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you very much thank, for thank coming. Yeah. Really thank you so much. Hearing from you, very, very from you. Yeah. and connect. You know, we should probably do this in October when the weather's good. <laughs> <laughs> and you aren't working so hard. Yeah. Yes. We're running for office or something. Yeah. 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 Cheap, but I apologize. You know the weather doesn't seem to cooperate in February. Well, it may make sense. Still. It is a tough time. Yeah. And one year we postponed yeah. it till May, and you were in the week of adjournment, and that was a disaster right. too. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> we keep trying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we do. Well, we used to have a, a slightly larger group. Yeah. Show and we really appreciate it. Yeah. Well. So thank you very much, and everyone drive safely and walk safely to the cars. Yep. Yep.